I'm going to tell you about a few potential day trips you can make when you visit Washington, D.C. Hello, welcome to Trip Hacks DC. My name is Rob. I'm a tour guide here in the nation's capital. If you're coming to Washington DC and you're looking for the best tips, tricks, and hacks for exploring the city, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any future videos. And if you're interested in signing up for a Trip Hacks DC tour, head on over to TripHacksDC.com afterwards to see all of the tours that we offer. People ask me about taking day trips from Washington DC all the time. And the truth is that there is so much to see and do right here in DC that day trips only really start to make sense when you're planning to stay for more than a few days. Trying to cram in a day trip or day trips when your itinerary is only three or four days long is really pushing it. However, if you're gonna be in DC for say seven days and there's a day trip that you really wanna do, then go for it. And if you live in or have taken any day trips from DC before during your travels, leave a comment on this video and let everyone know where you went and how you liked it. Otherwise, let's get started. Number one, Old Town Alexandria. Now I know what you're probably thinking. How is this possibly a day trip? It's only 10 miles from DC. You can even take the metro there if you want. And yes, that is true, but hear me out. Alexandria is only a few miles from DC but it's a unique city that has its own history and charm. There are plenty of shops and restaurants to keep you busy. And even if you're not into that sort of thing, just taking a stroll down King Street can be a really fun experience. The Torpedo Arts Factory on the waterfront is a destination in its own right. When you come to Alexandria, you can sign up for a guided walking tour or a food tour and learn all about the area. And if you're thinking that taking the Metro won't make it feel like a day trip, then why not take the water taxi instead? I have a video that shows you how to use the water taxi and you can use it to get from the wharf in DC right to Old Town Alexandria. There's just something about taking a water taxi that makes the experience feel more unique and special. Number two, Baltimore. Baltimore often gets overshadowed by DC, at least as far as visitors go. But people forget that Baltimore itself is a big city and it's very easy to get to from DC. You can take the Mark commuter train from Union Station and in about an hour, and for less than $10, you're in Baltimore. Once you get to Baltimore, the National Aquarium is a huge aquarium right on the Inner Harbor. DC actually does not have its own aquarium. So if you're into this sort of thing, this is a great excuse to get up there. If you're a big US history buff, Baltimore actually has quite a few notable sites from the War of 1812. One of these places is the Star Spangled Banner House. This is the actual home where Mary Young Pickersgill made the flag that now hangs in our American History Museum. And there's Fort McHenry, the spot where that actual flag actually flew. It's the flag that inspired Francis Scott Key to write that famous poem that is now our national anthem. If you're an art lover, the American Visionary Art Museum has a lot of funky, cool art that you can't really see in DC. And if you're a sports fan, the Ravens and the Orioles both play downtown. These next three places all require a drive. So if you're coming to DC without your own car, these will require arranging a rental. Number three on the list is Gettysburg. When people hear Gettysburg, they usually go straight to the Gettysburg Address, the famous speech that Abraham Lincoln gave that is now engraved inside the Lincoln Memorial. Gettysburg is an ideal day trip for any Civil War history buff. It's about 90 miles away in Pennsylvania, and you can get there in about two hours. Gettysburg National Military Park is the main attraction. It's where you can visit the Gettysburg National Battlefield, and the Gettysburg Museum. The park is part of the national park system and it's free to visit. If you wanna go, I recommend checking out their website in advance to see what programming they might have coming up and then use that to decide which date you wanna visit. Number four, Annapolis. Annapolis is the capital of Maryland, about 30 miles from DC. In good conditions, you can make that drive in under an hour, but be very careful because that number could go way up if you attempt to do the drive during rush hour. Of course, you can tour the Maryland State House one of the oldest state capitals and often considered one of the most beautiful. You can also take a tour of the U.S. Naval Academy, locally known as The Yard, especially if you're into U.S. Navy or Naval history. Annapolis is located right on the Chesapeake Bay, so if you go during a warm weather month, you can rent a sailboat and try your hand at that, or you can go on a fishing charter and see what you can catch. Even if you don't go on a boat to catch your own seafood, definitely eat Maryland's signature dish, steamed Chesapeake Bay crab covered in Old Bay seasoning. And number five is Charlottesville. Charlottesville is the farthest state trip from Washington, DC, about 120 miles and a two and a half to three hour drive. 
If you're into the Founding Fathers or early U.S. history, this is where Thomas Jefferson lived, and you can visit historic Monticello, his home. Charlottesville is a small city, sometimes considered a college town because of the campus of the University of Virginia. But it has some of the perks of a big city, like a lot of great restaurants, without the hustle and bustle of a big city. Virginia also actually has a pretty thriving wine scene, and a lot of vineyards are located near Charlottesville. So if you're a wine person, you don't have to go all the way out to Napa or France to go to vineyards. Of course, if you choose to do this, make sure you've got a designated driver to take you around. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, you can subscribe to this channel by clicking on the Trip Hacks DC logo, which is popping up right now at the bottom of the screen. And if you're coming to DC and want to sign up for a Trip Hacks DC tour, you can click on the Capitol Dome on the left side of my head. That'll send you over to TripHacksDC.com, where you can see all of the tours that we offer. Enjoy your trip!